Christmas in decades, a huge warm-up is about to begin across the eastern U.S. And at the same time, a relentless train of storms is setting up across the west coast that could lead to over 10 feet of snow in the mountains. When these two air masses meet in the center of the country, things will get chaotic with a chance for more widespread snow, damaging winds, and even wintertime tornadoes. It's really crazy to think about how just a few days ago, we were dealing with one of the coldest Arctic outbreaks of a lot of our lifetimes so far. 20 eight people are dead in Buffalo, New York alone, as this was one of the worst blizzards they have ever seen. The storm as a whole took the lives of 89 people, including citizens from Canada, Wisconsin, Ohio, and even Tennessee and Mississippi. And now, almost immediately after that, we are warming up dramatically across a lot of the hardest hit areas. And to a significant degree, look at how this model shows places seeing 30 to 40 degree above average temperatures early next week. As early as Monday, January 2nd, we could see highs in the 60s, 70s, and 80s across a lot of the southeastern U.S., and those warmer temperatures are going to try to push their way into the northeast as we head deeper into the week. I mean, look at that, 60 degrees in Detroit on the 3rd. But even before this big warm wave takes over, temperatures on New Year's Day are going to be much higher than they were on Christmas Day in this region. Check this out. The high temp in Boston on Christmas Day was 27 degrees, and on New Year's Day, it's going to be 56. In Nashville, Tennessee, it was 31 degrees on Christmas Day, and it'll be 65 on New Year's. And then take a look at the difference in New Orleans, where it'll be 75 on New Year's Day. which is a lot nicer than the 45 they were at on Christmas Day. All this sounds really great, but it comes at a cost. Whenever we get a big, warm heat wave bubble like this that forms up in the east in the winter, a blast of cold air almost always tries to knock it back into the Atlantic. When that happens, the clashing of warm and cold air can create some downright scary storms. And it really looks like that's gonna happen next week as we have the warmth in place. Cool air will be coming in to push it away, but one of the many other things we need for a big severe weather outbreak is moisture. And oh boy, do we have moisture to talk about. Some of you in the West are probably going to appreciate at least some of what I'm getting ready to tell you. Take a look at the latest drought monitor, okay? It's dry out there. But here's the thing. The snow, the rain, the precipitation that you're looking for is coming, but it might actually be too much. Starting earlier this week and continuing into the foreseeable future, we are going to see intermittent rivers of water in the air pour onto the West Coast from the Pacific Ocean. This is going to work similarly to the Siberian Express that brought all that cold air into the country around Christmas. But this time, it's warm, moist Pacific air that's being chucked into the lower 48. Meteorologists literally call these intense moisture flows atmospheric rivers. Imagine this big low-pressure center in the Pacific Ocean is a Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack mud tire. Now, imagine the tropical moisture in the atmosphere over the Pacific is mud. Now, buddy, hit the gas. And not only are we going mudding, but the counterclockwise flow splatters this moisture across the West Coast, and especially along the mountains mountain ranges, it condenses and falls as rain or snow. And once again, these atmospheric river events are going to continue to happen on a consecutive basis through early January. One of the bigger ones will occur this weekend and bring an additional six to eight inches of rain to the Bay Area and several feet of snow to the Sierras. So if we take a look at the GFS all the way out to January 13th, we're looking at some precipitation totals over 20 inches and a widespread chunk of the western U.S. getting over two to four inches. I promise this is going to lead to some pretty significant flash flooding and mudslides. So if you live in an area that's prone to this, please be prepared for that. Oh, and also over the next 350 hours or so, some of the mountaintops out here in California could see over 10 feet of snow. So all this moisture in the West is so relentless that a good chunk of it is going to go right over the Rocky Mountains and into the Central Plains. When that moisture combines with the warm air coming out of the South and the cooler air filtering in from the North, and we really start to see the counterclockwise action start to take place in our deepening storm system, things are going to get even wilder. First of all, up north, we're going to have another blizzard with strong winds and heavy snow. But down south, it's looking like another dangerous severe weather situation is about to unfold. Of course, it's not just me saying this. The official meteorological powerhouse known as the Storm Prediction Center is sounding the alarm by highlighting this area under a rare day five risk for severe weather. They're also already talking about the potential for tornadoes, which is once again pretty rare for a day five forecast in the winter. The reason for this confidence is because of 
the warm sector associated with this storm. Just look at the widespread juicy air here with dew points in the 60s all the way up into the Ohio Valley on Monday. Now watch that warm moist air get kicked out of the way by cool dry air being forced in by our deepening storm system. Along this line is where the storms are going to be. Go ahead and throw in some 60 to 70 knot winds just above the surface and you've got a recipe for disaster if storms can continue into the night. And right now it does look like some of those storms are going to do just that with potential severe weather happening into the morning hours on Tuesday. This kind of setup is known for producing tornadoes out there, so it's an additional concern that we might really have to worry about naders in the dark. Remember, we're still five days out. We're going to know so much more about the timing and exact hazards with this storm as we get closer, but right now it looks generally concerning for the entire affected area. But another thing that I think is kind of being overlooked here is the flooding concern. Not just in the west, where yes, it's going to be a huge problem, but the leftover moisture and combined amplification from the Gulf of Mexico will lead to some pretty big rain totals across a lot of the eastern U.S. as well. Basically, if you live anywhere in the orange or the red or the purple on this map and you live in a flood-prone area, please be weather aware as we go into the new year. Also, of course, if you're in the yellow on this map, be double extra weather aware, whether you're in a tornado-prone area or not. And I'm not kidding. Being prepared is one of the most important things you can do in a situation like this. I often say, don't be scared, be prepared, because when you're calm, cool, and collected, it's easier to make decisions and ultimately get yourself and your family to shelter in an emergency situation. A lot of you watching this are already prepared, especially if you're watching me. But what about when things happen at night when you're trying to go to sleep? And what about when the power goes out and when cell phone towers go down? In those situations, I highly recommend getting a NOAA weather radio if you want to take the next step towards being as prepared as you possibly can be. These things are awesome, and they tune into your local National Weather Service and, and give you the latest alerts, whether you have power or not. They run off batteries, or you can plug them into the wall if you want to, and you'll be able to listen to that, and it will wake you up in the middle of the night. If there's a tornado warning or a flash flood warning, this thing is going to scream at you. We got a bunch of different versions on the website, shopryanhall.com. This one is like, it's got a flashlight on it. You can crank it to power it. You don't even have to worry about having charged batteries, and it charges your phone. I mean, like, there's just a lot of different use cases for these, but I think that these should be as prominent in houses as like carbon monoxide detectors or fire detectors. These things save lives. So go on over to shopryanhall.com. There's a link in the description and get you one of these things right now. And we're going to ship it to you as fast as we can. But while you're waiting, go ahead and go over your tornado action plan or your flash flood action plan with your family. That way, when this thing goes off, you and everybody in your household knows what you're going to do. And I promise your odds of getting through a bad situation exponentially increase as long as you, you do those things. So thank you for watching and thank you for supporting. You don't have to buy this from me. You can get it at Target, but if you want to get it from me, obviously it helps me out. ShopRyanHall.com. A super huge shout out to all of our members over here. Thank you all for being a part of the channel. And once again, I, I say this after every video now, but I have another channel. We're about to hit 200,000 subscribers over there on the Ryan Hall Y'all Extra channel. And I'm going to be uploading pretty much daily over there as we get closer to this big storm, uh, giving you updates. So don't ask me why I have two channels, okay? It it's YouTube's fault. But if you subscribe to both of them and you get a NOAA weather radio, you're going to be one of the most weather prepared person on earth. I can promise you that. Just thank you so much for giving me the best job in the world and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Were you